Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video <laughs> on world edit. So today I'm going to be going over some pretty complicated stuff, and uh, mainly I'm going to be going over this lovely list of commands and selections you can do with world edit. But before we even get into this, I'm going to go over a couple of things and a couple of ways you can select things differently. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so to start things off, what I mean by selecting things differently is the main way to select things is going to be to get your slash slash wand, and that'll just give you this ax in whatever slot you are holding something in. So if I were to do it over here, it would shift it over there. Now, with this, Normally you can do left click and that'll be your post one. And if you right click, that will be your post two. And as you can see, we have the visualizer plugin on this world edit visualizer plugin so that we can see most of our selections with the exception of some of the more complicated ones like cylindrical, convex, polyhedral, and fuzzy. And we'll get into why we can't see these later in the video. So normally you select left click post one, right click post two. So the other way of selecting will be to go ahead and type in slash slash POS one and that will put it right where your legs are. And so if we are to put it there and we go ahead and go up here with POS two, we can see it will adjust our selection accordingly. Now, another way you can do this, instead of having to type the command, you can always use a power tool, which is what I do with my swords here. So I do slash PT and then slash POS. And for the wooden one, I like to do two. And then this one, you can do one. And if we go ahead and click here, it will put post one where our legs are. And if we go ahead and fly down here and do post two, and then we grab onto our ax, we can see it'll make us a nice selection just by clicking. Now there is one more thing we can do, and that is slash far wand. So for this, we're gonna need to get a regular tool. So something in here, any one of these lovely tools will work. I'm gonna go ahead and just get a nice stone pickaxe and we can do slash far wand. Wherever our cursor is will be our first position. So I'm gonna do this a little bit more close to something so I can show you. If we do right click say over here and our other click over here, we can do post one there. And if we get our ax, we can see that it made our selection. And we didn't have to even fly or click on the blocks for it. So on top of this, there is a few commands that go in conjunction with every selection you can use with the exception of fuzzy. So for these commands, we're gonna start out with slash slash expand, which simply does exactly what it sounds like. It expands your selection in the direction you're looking or the direction you give it. So let's say we want to go five and let's say we want to go north instead of the way direction I'm looking, it will expand it north that way instead of the way I was looking. And if we wanted to do it the way I'm looking, I can just simply get rid of it and also expand my selection the same way. And it will do that. Now, if I want to do the opposite thing and contract a wall, it will also go the way I'm looking, except this time it's going to go from behind me. So if I want to contract this wall that's closest to me in towards the other wall, I simply look this way and I do contract and then a number and it will contract that wall down to the other. So let's go ahead and say we want to shift this up to this block up here we can do slash slash shift as well, which will in six up, we'll also shift it one in the direction I'm looking 
and we'll have it around our block. Now that pretty much sums up the different ways of selecting something. Now we can start going over all of the different actual selection tools. So the first one, and the one we've been using already, is slash cell cuboid. So if we go ahead and type that in, we can see that it tells us to left click for the first point and right click for the second, just like we've been doing. So if we go ahead and do that again, just to show you, let's left click there and right click here and we'll get our nice selection. And then we go ahead, and if we want to get this nice list again, all we have to do is type cell and literally anything except for these actual words, and it'll bring up the list. So I like to just do cell help, because that reminds me that it's the list. <laughs> so now the next one is going to be cell extend. So this is basically the same as cell cuboid, except if you add a second position, it will extend the selection rather than moving the second position to that point. So if we go ahead and let's say we want to put our second position up here for our normal cuboid selection that we're still on, and we do second position there, it'll shift our selection up. So let's say we wanted to expand our selection just down to the ground. And let's say I want to move just this wall out just a little bit. So we're going to move this wall out and we're going to go down to the ground. So let's say I want to put my other position here. Normally if I do that, it'll just move my entire selection. So let's go ahead and put it back up here. And if we go ahead and do slash slash cell extend and we, and we try to do that same position, this time it's going to expand out our region according to that new position. And it'll keep the cuboid selection. Okay, so the next one on our list is going to be cell poly. So this one is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated because you can have multiple second positions. So if we go ahead and start our first position with left click, we can see that if we were just to do one position over here and try to do, let's just say set one, it's going to tell us we haven't made a full region selection. So all we have to do is simply add any other one more second position. So I'm going to go ahead and right click right here and we can see that it lines, makes a line from every point with our lovely outline. So if we go ahead and set 95, whoops, that's the wrong block, <laughs> we can see it'll follow along our lines that we made and we can go ahead and make this more complicated just by right clicking and it'll add in any line we do. <laughs> so in order to get rid of our selection, we can always just do slash slash cell, and it'll clear it. So as you can see with what's going on over here, this one doesn't work very well on a three-dimensional level. So if we go ahead and select a nice little spot right here on our two-dimensional plane, we can see that it'll give us our nice outline. Now, normally, if we were to, say, select a point in the center here, we would think that the line would follow down towards the center this way. However, if we go ahead and set 9.5 in there, we can see that it simply stacks our region all the way down to that point rather than meeting that point in the middle. So for something like complicated like that, we can use some of these other ones that we'll go over in just a bit. So the next two on our list are gonna be relatively similar but cell ellipsoid is actually going to be more complicated than cell sphere, so we're going to go over cell sphere first. So let's go ahead and type cell sphere. And if we go ahead and use our power tools, we can make floating spheres just like this by simply putting our first position for our center and our second position for our radius. Now for this one, if even if we make a really small sphere, so let's go ahead and just do one right here and go right here with a radius of five, and we go to our ax, we still can't see our outline because this is one of the ones that it just doesn't work with. So if we go ahead and do just set, let's just do some wood, we can see that it made our sphere. And normally when you make this selection, it will put two, uh, I like to call them nipples on these sides, and it will put nothing on the other two sides. And that's generally consistent throughout 
the sizes, as you can see. All of these were made with the World Edit Selection. So if we want to make something more complicated, like these big, this big yellow thing, or this blue one, or this egg shaped right here, we can use our next one, which is going to be the one we skipped, cell ellipsoid. So for this one, if we go ahead and make our first position our center, just like we normally would with cell sphere, we can start. Now for this, I like to keep track of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do up one to show myself that's where the center is. So now if we do post two, and we fly around. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type this in for you guys so we can see that this other way of selecting things works as well. So if we go ahead and do post two right here, so this is going to be our first reference point for post position two. And if we were to go ahead and just set nine five in there right now, we can see already that we have a different shape. Now let's say we wanna make this extend out way, way higher and way lower. So we actually only need to add one more position in to do that. And we can either do it on the top or the bottom. So I'm gonna go down actually, because I don't want it to go through the ground. So we're gonna go right to the ground and just go ahead and add that position too. And we can also just do it this way as well. And if we go ahead and set nine five, and we're gonna get out of this, we can see it extended out our selection to be kind of tubular just like this one down here. So next up on our list is going to be cell cylinder. So this one is not very complicated and it does pretty much exactly what you would think where if we go ahead and type it in, cell CYL, we can make selections that look like this. So this one, however, will give us a nice outline in the selection. We can see, unlike uh, sphere, so if we go ahead and use that as our point reference, we can see that it will make a two-dimensional cylinder, and we can set some more 9.5 to see our cylindrical selection, what it's gonna place. And unfortunately, it seems it doesn't place along the selection, it places inside of it. So now if we wanted to make this taller, we would go ahead and just add a position two. So I'm gonna type POS2 up here, and it will put it right where our legs are. And we can go ahead and set 9.5. Let's do a nice color. Blue. Hmm. All right, and that pretty much sums up cell cylindrical. Now, if we want to make it wider, we can also add in another position to here, and it will simply expand out our selection, as you can see. So you can experiment with that more if you want. Now, next up on our list is going to be some of our most complicated selections here. So convex and polyhedral are basically the most complex selections we have. So both of these are gonna be building second positions. So you'll use second position multiple times in order for it to work. So let's go ahead and start with cell convex. So for this, I like to think of it as the line tool and the really complex selection tool. So we can do a couple things with this. The first thing is going to be to make lines. So something like this wood selection we have right here. So if we wanna make a line like that, we can simply do our first position to anchor ourselves. So that's where we want our line to start. So we can either do it up here. Let's, let's actually start it down on the ground here. So let's do it with this. Our first position anchored on the ground. And now let's do second position. I'm gonna fly a little bit slower and we can just click around, fly around and we'll see the kind of path we take, and we'll go down a little bit with this one too, because we can do that. And we'll go and give it kind of more 3D-ness. So let's go ahead, in order to see the line we made, we can do curve, and let's just do 19. And we can see it makes a really complex line following the path that we were flying while we were clicking and making our second positions add up. So if we wanted to do this without our power tool, we could simply do it the same way we just did, so post one, and we would have to stop and type in POS2 every time we wanted to make our line follow our path. So let's go ahead and set 19 in there. So actually, to show you kind of what this tool also does, so let's go ahead and curve that other one with 19 as well, and let's go ahead and set inside of there with one. 
Now you can see it does its best to stay within the perimeters of the points that you made, no matter on all angles. So for this one, this is where it comes in handy to do a more complex selection like we were talking about earlier with the selecting down points. So let me show you what I mean here. Let's go over to here and do post one. Let's just do a nice 2D selection up here. And we can see that it's not going to show us what it looks like, unfortunately, because this is one of the few that it, the visualizer does not work with. Now, say we want to make this go down to point right here. Now, if we go ahead and set 9.5 in there, we can see it will this time take into account the bend down to that point on all angles. So for cell polyhedral, it's going to be a little bit more complex. So if we go ahead and type cell polyhedral, poly, we can try and select something sort of like what we have here with this pink. So we can go ahead and do post one right here with our left click and it's going to start a vertex instead of POS one. And we can left click to do another vertex. And if we go ahead and make this two dimensional and set inside that with nine five, it will do its best to just do sort of a polyhedral selection. Now, if we want to make this three dimensional and say, let's add a vertex down here and we go ahead and set nine five in that, it will do its best to make it hollow within that selection. So the bigger it is, the better it works at making it hollow. As you can see, there's only a couple of blocks that are actually being making this hollow in the center of this. So it works with a grain of salt, but you guys can play around with this and figure out how to make more complex things with it. So a bigger selection example of this would be something like this, where every second point is these ends. So the first point being up here, and then the second points being around here. So the, all the vertices and it makes this when you set 9.5 inside of it. So if we go ahead and use our last selection here, this is my favorite cell fuzzy. So for this, it's going to select all the blocks that are connected to each other. So let's say we want to do some selection just like this with our sponge over here, and we don't want to get the sphere that's on it. We don't want to get all this stuff. So all we have to do is click with our left left click on the sponge and we can go ahead and just copy that and if we were to paste it out here we don't even have to paste it without air because it doesn't copy the air so let's just paste and as you can see it'll just paste it through all these without taking into account these air pockets and it only copied the sponge that is connected so now let's say we want to add glass that's connected so if I want this glass, I would simply add it with my second position or right click and it'll add all of that glass that's connected. So let's say we want a couple more. Let's add this one. Let's add this chunk and let's add, let's add this stone that's connected right here. So if we go ahead and copy this now, we can see if we paste it out here with our other one, it'll have both the stone, the glass the plots and none of the other stuff will be there. So unfortunately though, if we want to select multiple colors for something like this, or say something like this, something I found is that this selection tool does not work on multiple colors. So if we wanted to select that, we would have to actually go ahead and replace the specific nine fives that are in there rather than trying to select one color at a time. So if we select this, we can see and we copy it and paste it. It will select all of the nine five that's selected there instead of just the blue that we clicked on. All right, and that about sums up this video and that list. I hope this video was super helpful for you all. Uh, if you guys have any questions, either let me know in the comments below or there's also an invite to both the Builders Refuge Discord and the Everbloom Discord where you guys can specifically add me and ask or any of the other team members and ask. 
where I'm sure the helpful community will answer your questions. Um, thank you all for watching again. Pluto out. <laughs>